Yunnan means south of the clouds, and we couldn't have chosen a more perfect day to land in one of its most beautiful destinations, Dali. We're picked up by my friend Jared, who moved to this area a couple of years ago. He greets us with a delicious welcoming gift of spicy rice noodles. Dali comprises of a small group of towns built along the shores of Urhai Lake, surrounded by lush green mountains. Yunnan is a land of ethnic minorities. In fact, it's the most ethnically diverse region in China. The local cuisine reflects this exciting melting pot of cultures and amazing biodiversity, featuring unique products like the finest and most expensive teas in the world. The variety in Yunnan is so great that it's even possible to find something that is rarely associated with China. Cheese. We end up in Dongchang, a village known for its cheese making, and it doesn't take us long to find a street lined with rows of swinging dairy. That's where we meet Yang Chunchun, a local cheese maker who's been making the local specialty of Rushan cheese thread since she was 16. She's very friendly, happy to answer questions, and we're very excited to learn from her. So it's just like mozzarella. Yeah. When I was looking at the texture of it earlier, I thought, wow, this is just like mozzarella. The process starts with month-old whey from a previous batch, which has acidified, so now it can be used as the curdling agent. Once the whey comes to a boil, cold, fresh cow milk is mixed in. Mrs. Yang has her own names for the two different forms of milk. The sour sauce is just that, sour. That's what enables it to curdle the sweet milk. Once the milk curdles and starts separating, the whey is strained out and the curds are pressed together. This whey will now be aged about a month and used to curdle future batches. I love that they're using a... a um, <laughs> it's not a fly sweater, it's like a, a fan. A plastic fan to, to work the curds. Mrs. Yang uses other interesting tools. Uh, when, when I've done mozzarella, at this point when you're working the curds, you wear these silicone mat gloves so you can work it with your hands, but she has that clever way of doing it with the... Chopsticks. Yeah. Once the curds are pressed together, they actually look, feel, and taste a lot like mozzarella. A bit rubbery, very fresh yeah. and mild. Mm -hmm. Thick chopsticks are then used to roll and stretch the cheese as thin as possible. She makes it look easy, but that's technique honed over years of daily practice. The cheese is wrapped around wooden poles and hung from the ceiling to dry. It's almost like a cheese art installation. As Ms. Yang progresses through the day's work, these poles are transferred outside, where the cheese will dry in the open air for 24 hours. Once ready, the Ru Shan has a fascinating leathery texture. It can be stored, dried for a week, or frozen for three months. It's usually cut into flat slices and deep fried. Ms. Yang offers to cook up some for us to taste, and even though we're busy devouring her delicious milk popsicles, we gladly accept. She doesn't have a kitchen in her shop, so we move to her friend's restaurant across the street. That's when I suddenly notice another fermented treat of China waiting for us on the table. Pidan, also known as Thousand Year Old Egg. Pidan are found all over China and pretty scary to the uninitiated. They are an alkaline preserve that once upon a time was rumored to be cultured in horse urine. They're actually raw eggs left to rest for weeks or months in a caustic mixture of clay, ash, salts, rice, chaff, and straw. Once the mud and shell are removed, an amber-like interior is revealed with a fantastic gelatinous texture and an earthy, funky flavor. This super quick Yunnan style salad is a perfect way to serve them. Take a big bunch of fresh mint leaves and chop them coarsely. 
Slice the pea down in small wedges and add them to the leaves. Add thinly sliced spring onions, red chilies and garlic, and then season everything with salt, vinegar, soy sauce and chili oil. Mix well, serve on a plate, and get ready for an explosion of flavour. Since we're having a snack, we also order a dish of liang fen, a bean starch jelly typical of southwest China. It's usually sold in blocks like tofu, sliced and served cold with a savoury sauce. Here, it's made of bright yellow chickpea flour and deep fried to perfection. All these fantastic snacks are distractions. We came here to fry the cheese. As soon as the cheese touches the oil, it sizzles and turns golden as a metamorphosis unfolds and the thinly stretched layer of cheese inflates with pillow-like pockets. We have to wait for the sugar. But it looks so spectacular. Yeah, there was a little piece before the sugar. Mrs. Yang covers the crispy, flaky fried cheese with sugar. Mm, it's like a cheesy beignet. It's delicious. Ultra light, crispy, warm fried cheese. Yum! It was especially fun to encounter cheese on our exploration of Chinese fermentation. Cheese is often cited as not being present in Chinese cuisine. But one of the things I'm learning here is that in this vast land lies incredible diversity of cultures and of traditional practices. Of course there is cheese in China.